some people suspected that the second semifinal, Arizona ranked second in the country against Oklahoma ranked fourth, was really the championship game, the critical matchup in the final four. Oklahoma, coached by Billy Tubbs, and Arizona, coached by Lute Olson, had never before met in basketball. But each knew the other was explosive. Oklahoma had averaged 104 points a game. But Oklahoma fizzled in the opening minutes, missing five of its first six shots. Only Harvey Grant's jumper saved the Sooners from being shut out in the first four and a half minutes, as Arizona spurted to a 9-2 lead. Anthony Cook started the Arizona surge, connecting on his first three shots. All-America Sean Elliott kept the surge going. He made his first five shots. The Wildcat fans thought they couldn't miss. But then Oklahoma and its pressing defense took command. Mookie Blaylock's steal led to a layup for Dave Seeger. And while Sooner fans were still savoring Mookie's nifty theft, Ricky Grace came up with another. The Sooners, after missing eight of their first ten shots, made seven of their next ten. The Oklahoma pressure, though, didn't always work. When Sean Elliott beat the press for a driving layup eight minutes into the game, Arizona regained the lead 13 to 12. Coach Olsen celebrated, but his Wildcats never let again. Eight and a half minutes into the game, Stacy King's jumper moved Oklahoma ahead for good. King had 12 points in the first half, matching Elliott's output for Arizona. Neither team was very effective from long range. Only seven and a half minutes remained in the first half when Oklahoma Seeger hit the game's first three-pointer, widening his team's lead to six points. Arizona suddenly lost its shooting touch. After making nine of its first 14 shots, the Wildcats missed 12 of the next 14. Arizona's sharpshooting guard, Steve Kerr, who'd made more than half of his three-point shots all season, tried six in the first half and missed five of them. Oklahoma, on the other hand, sank seven of nine shots in a six-minute stretch. Andre Wiley hit two of the baskets, and the Sooners raced to a 14-point lead. Arizona's decline mirrored the fortunes of its start. John Elliott, who couldn't miss at the beginning, missed his last six shots of the first half. Sooner fans were ecstatic. Arizona, which had come into the Final Four with a 15-game winning streak, which had won its four tournament games by an average of 27 points, was down by 12 at the half. Oklahoma, the Big Eight champions, hoped the second half would be just like the first. But Lute Olson told his Arizona players it had to be different. Three minutes into the second half, Olson's message got through. Arizona ran off 13 points to Oklahoma's four, sinking four straight shots in a minute and a half. Judd Bushler came off the Wildcat bench and sank the first two shots he took, the second at the end of this dazzling display of teamwork. Arizona was clearly on its way back, and when Elliott ended a seven-minute personal drought with a driving dunk, the Wildcats drew within three points, 51-48, with almost 13 minutes left in the game. But that was as close as Arizona would get. Oklahoma scored seven of the next eight points. And when Harvey Grant caught fire, he scored eight of his 21 points in a five-minute spurt. The Sooners opened some breathing room. Starting with Grant's shot, the Sooners outscored Arizona 12-3 to during the next three minutes and were never again seriously threatened. Mookie Blaylock, the quick-handed guard, alertly contributed to the Oklahoma rally. Coach Tubbs was delighted, even though, for a change, he knew his team was not going to reach the 100 mark. With one minute and 41 seconds remaining in the game, Arizona drew within eight points on Anthony Cook's jumper. But that was the Wildcats' last gasp. Oklahoma promptly took the ball down court. And when Andre Wiley, who came off the bench to score 11 points, made the layup, that opened the gap to 10 points. Oklahoma fans rejoice. Only three months after the Sooners played for the National Football Championship in the Orange Bowl, they were going to play for the National Basketball Championship in Kansas City.
Billy Tubbs, in his first Final Four, was going to the final game, hoping that his team would fare better than the football team. His Sooners had every reason to dance. They'd faced Kansas twice during the regular season and had beaten them twice by eight points each time. For the first time ever, two Big Eight teams were in the NCAA championship game. And with the game being played in the heart of Big Eight country, Kemper Arena was packed with partisans, most of them rooting for Kansas. But if the Jayhawks had the edge off the court, the Sooners certainly seemed to have the edge on. Larry Brown's Kansas team had no national ranking at the end of the regular season. And no team had ever lost 11 games and won the national championship. From the opening tip-off, it took Oklahoma precisely six seconds to score, even faster than its usual pace. Mookie Blaylock hitting on a jump shot. It took Kansas 30 seconds to get even. Danny Manning picking up right where he left off against Duke. The tone of the first half was set. The first six shots the teams took, four by Kansas, went in. Kevin Pritchard made the first three shots he took, all jumpers. Milt Newton, who blocked two Oklahoma shots in the half, was equally as impressive at the offensive end. With a fine pass from Pritchard, Newton was on his way to a perfect 5-for-5 five five first half. But Newton was hardly the only master marksman. Kansas, almost unbelievably, made 20 of its first 24 shots. 83%, yet couldn't pull away from Oklahoma. The Sooners' Dave Seeger took eight three-point shots in the first half and made six of them. Nine times before the intermission, the lead changed hands. Seven times the score was tied. The pace, the play was stunning. Pritchard Steele set up this Kansas basket. A remarkable driving, twisting, spinning maneuver by Newton. The difference between the two teams was never more than six points. It grew to five for the first time when Clint Normore, a football player who wasn't even on the Kansas roster at the start of the season, drove in for his first postseason basket. Oklahoma shooting cooled off. During one five-minute stretch, the Sooners missed more shots than Kansas missed during the entire first half. But still, the Sooners trail by only two points after Stacy King turned a layup into a three-point play. Oklahoma fans hoped it would be just a matter of time until their superior athletes wore down Kansas. But Manning was more than a match for the Sooners' manpower. The six-foot, ten-inch senior was awesome. Kansas supporters were accustomed to Manning's heroics. Four steals in the first half, seven rebounds, 14 points, and this assist, setting up Clint Normore's second postseason basket. Neither Larry Brown nor anyone else was accustomed to heroics from Normore. He joined the team only after assorted injuries and academic difficulties had decimated the roster. Kansas managed to hold the lead for seven straight minutes until, with eight and a half minutes left in the half, Blaylock's three-pointer tied the score at 33. But then the unlikeliest of heroes came through again, Normore, who had not scored even one point in the Jayhawks' five previous postseason games, pumped in a three-pointer, giving him a total of seven points in six minutes. But Oklahoma then scored six straight points. The Sooners' Stacy King, who was accustomed to scoring, came up with a steal and a driving dunk that gave Oklahoma a three-point lead. Its biggest of the half, 39-36. Dave Seeger scored the next nine Oklahoma points. He scored them in a three-minute spurt when he took three three-point shots and made all of them. The third gave the Sooners a three-point lead with under two minutes remaining before the intermission. Kansas bounced right back, scored the next five points, two of them when Manning, his long arms everywhere, stole the ball, loped the length of the court, and floated in to score. He was no more excited than the Kansas fans who were beginning to suspect that, against all odds and all logic, the Jayhawks might upset the Sooners. 
22 seconds before halftime, Oklahoma caught up. Ricky Grace, off balance, falling away, hitting the Sooners' sixth basket in their final eight shots of the half. It was Oklahoma's kind of half, a 100-point pace, but it was, surprisingly, all even.